On this episode of Hot Rod Unlimited, we're throwing a party and we have a special guest. 1967 Impala. The reason we invited this car is because we want to paint it. It's ugly. It needs help. We're going to attempt to paint this car in one day in a friend's backyard. A few years back, David Freiberger bought this 1967 Impala, um, high mileage car, white. They did the basics of installing your first engine. It was a Smittings 383 crate engine with a Bowler 700R4 transmission. And right after that, they did a vinyl wrap. And it was right when hot rodding was first considering vinyl wrap as a viable option. It's a big thing in motorsports, uh, but nobody really in the hot rodding was doing it commonly until then. And people hated it. David claims it to be the most hated project car that Hot Rod has ever had. We ripped off all the vinyl. We decided to do something different with the Impala. David sent it down to Pete Santini in Orange County, California to have a professional paint job done. He did a great job on the car, but David picked out the color. I love the fact that he went out on a risk with the color, but it just turned out to be ugly. Oh, wow. Oh, dude. Oh, it looks like somebody puked on it. Wow, that is a whole lot of bad. That's what that is. Oh, that is not good. Fail. Yeah, I really didn't get any better with them off. Yeah. <laughs> After that, David decided to sell it. Um, he was actually getting ready to load it on the trailer and take it to the swap meet. And I said, hey, I've always wanted a convertible. 67 Impala is a really cool car. I'll buy it from you. Um, I lowballed him and it took him about a week or so before he took me up on the offer, but I did finally buy it kind of bred new life into the project car. So somebody said, well, why don't we paint it? And everybody in the room kind of looked around and we couldn't think of a good enough excuse not to, so we decided to do it. The premise behind painting the car in the backyard was you can call up Summit and they will send you an entire kit that includes paint, gun, it even included a stand-up for us to make our own paint booth in a backyard. Everything you needed, you don't necessarily need a paint shop, we bought some extra stuff, but the biggest thing for us was manpower. Doing it in such a tight time frame, we made it into a bit of a party to get our buddies there and, and help us. We had the whole Hot Rod staff there, but we also called in Dennis Pitzenbarger with Hot Rod Magazine Live. He's been doing this for several years now, so he was kind of our resident expert. Preparation in a paint job is everything. It doesn't matter how great I am with a gun or how great Jesse might be with a gun. The reality of it is prep is everything in a paint job and every painter will tell you that. We first started with a DA on certain areas and we were block sanding most of the area and we worked our way down until we were to a fine Scotch-Brite pads. When you're sanding, you're really looking for making it dull, making it just enough for the paint to stick to but you don't want to make marks where the paint will stick inside of a mark or inside of a gash or anything like that. You're basically just looking to dull the gloss down. Luckily, the car had been professionally painted very close to the time frame of when we started working on it. So they had done a lot of the body work. We were just mainly scuffing up their layer of paint so that our new paint would adhere to it. Despite it being Southern California, it decided to rain. The entire reason why I bought the car was because it never rains in Southern California, and halfway through our first day, it started raining. Ultimately, it didn't slow us down that much in our prep work. It just meant we went from dry sandpaper to wet sandpaper. So dry sandpaper uses the dust to get off of the paper itself. The wet sandpaper just uses the water to get all the stuff that's coming off with the sandpaper, it goes off into the water and just falls off out of the way. When it starts to rain, it's California. You just go underneath the car and use it as its own little area. Luckily, the rain didn't last too long. The sun came back out and we started using dry sandpaper again. We decided to go with a red color because all old muscle cars look good red. Ideally, what you actually want to do when you change color is strip the interior, take every panel off that you can take off, doors, fenders, everything, and paint them all individually. But we don't have that long. We were trying to get this done in a day, so we're doing what's called jamming and we're gonna paint this through here with a spray paint rather than pulling the panels off and painting it. There's really kind of two trains of thought. You know, some people say a person in a professional refinishing shop will have a paper tree, which is tape hooked up to paper, pull it off in big sheets and kind of do it like that. Or you can do it, you know, the way we're gonna do it today, which is more like 
edge it all out with tape. You can see him kind of getting all the bumper, but yet leaving a space for the paint here. What I'll do is I'll edge all the little things I don't want to paint first, then we'll put some paper down to make sure we don't overspray his bumper. Let that tack off really quick, let it dry, and uh, then I'll hit it with a cover coat and it should be fine. So it's about six o'clock right now. We're finishing up for the day. We've got in the car most of the way prepped. We don't have anything taped off, but we've got most of the jams done and most of the sanding done. It's been a fun experience. It's proof that anybody can go down to Summit, grab some stuff and paint their car. And we got a little bit more work to do. We're gonna finish off the jams under the hood. And technically, we're not doing it in one day, but we're still within the plenty of the time frame. We could easily do it tonight, right? Yeah, we ran, you know, we fought wind, we fought rain, we fought temperature. And when you paint a car in the cold, the reality is we don't have $150,000 downdraft. So we don't need hour and a half flash time. So instead of being here until two in the morning, we're gonna fast forward till tomorrow and wrap it up. Day two was less about the car and more about the paint booth. One of the first things we did was finish masking the car. We masked off the interior, the bumpers. All we did was pull off the basic trim and taped off the rest. Our biggest enemy in dealing with a backyard paint job is dust and dirt. Brandon was in the paint booth cleaning it out, and then when the paint job was ready, we laid water down, and this was to keep me from kicking up dust as I was painting the car and to keep dust down and out of the paint. Finally, after all this work, we got to what we actually came for, which was painting the car. The paint suits were not only to protect our clothes and our body, but they were also to protect the car. It would keep down dust and dirt and grease that's on our body and on our clothes. So the first step was laying the primer sealer, just in case there was anything from the previous paint job that would affect our new paint job. Things can come through primer, but things will not come through sealer. Because of the red color, we wanted to use a lighter color sealer underneath it, so we used a light gray sealer. Dennis was great. He showed a lot of different techniques. When you're making a pass, your, your air, your spray, and then you let off the product, not the air. Here, I'll show you. Okay. There, done, there. See, I'm spraying, but I'm not spraying product, okay? We used a base coat, clear coat system, which is a two-stage system, and we used a primer sealer. So there's three layers of product on there. So the paint job's not a traditional gloss red. We have a nice, cool satin clear coat on top of it. The painting process from the first time primer hit the body until the last time the clear hit the body felt like forever. Ultimately, I think it was about two and a half or three hours. It was such a thrill to know that we did this and we pulled it off. And it looks really good. For my first paint job I've ever done, I am really, really excited. It's gonna look awesome. Since finishing the paint job, I can't stop driving it. I absolutely love it, and I'm trying to make it a daily driver. This is no longer a car I just bought. It's a car I drive and I painted. That's pretty cool to pull up and park and shut the door and look back at the car and say, you know what, I painted that. You can follow my blogs at blogs.hotrod.com, and I'll show you how I'm trying to make it a daily driver. And what do you guys think? What should we do with this thing next? What would make this car cool? Tell us in the comments below.